Hello everyone and welcome to uh, the Tiny Action Challenge. This challenge is focused on low resolution activity recognition. The challenge was organized by uh, CRCB uh, at the University of Central Florida. And this is the organizing team. The team was uh, led by uh, Professor Mubarak Shah. Uh, we have postdoc uh, Shruti Vyas and we have PhD students Ayush, Praveen and Tushar. And myself, uh, Yogesh Rawat and I'm an assistant professor uh, at CRCV. So uh, the agenda for today's presentation is, first I will uh, give you a brief overview about uh, the challenge, and then we'll have uh, talks from the uh, top performers. Now let's first try to understand uh, why uh, exactly we need to focus on tiny actions. So uh, tiny actions are actually uh, very common in uh, real world scenarios. Uh, for example, uh, if, we, if we look into surveillance videos, if we look into security, uh, uh, or if we look into autonomous driving, and there are many other scenarios. So the actual activities captured are, uh, they can be a uh, very uh, low resolution. And the reason is they are actually occurring uh, very far away from the camera. So here uh, I'm showing you a sample video uh, from uh, Virat data set. So this data set is actually focused on surveillance videos. And here uh, we can observe that uh, the camera is actually uh, placed uh, at a location and these all these activities are happening far away from the camera. So we can see that uh, the actual resolution of uh, these activities uh, is not that high. And specifically, uh, it's, uh, it's very common uh, if we focus on, on this uh, top region here, there is a person performing some activity which will be very tiny, probably a few pixels. Uh, if we compare this with uh, some of the other existing uh, data sets uh, which are focused on activity recognition, uh, such as AVA data set. So here we can see that if we look at this uh, particular instance, so this activity is like uh, captured very carefully. The camera is totally focusing on the actors and uh, we are not missing any, any details here. And of course, uh, this is also uh, very important from uh, uh, very important for some applications like robotics. Uh, but if you talk about surveillance security and all these applications, uh, it's, it's not that relevant. Now, uh, first, uh, let's try to understand uh, where uh, the research in activity recognition stands uh, today. So most of uh, the existing research, uh, which is trying to solve the problem of uh, action recognition in videos, it uses high quality videos. So if you look at like the data sets which we have, like UCF101, we have uh, JHNDB, we have Planetics, and we have many more. So the videos in all these data sets are actually high resolution. And uh, here I'm showing you some sample video frames from some of these data sets. And you can see that uh, clearly uh, the actor who is performing the action is uh, clearly visible. So there is no issue of like the resolution or missing details or any other uh, green in the video frames. Now, uh, if you look into tiny actions, uh, so there has been some initial effort and uh, what has been tried is uh, the, the videos which we already have in this, these existing data sets, which are high resolution, they can be easily uh, downsample to low resolution. So we can call that like synthetically uh, downsampling. And the issue is these uh, downsample videos are uh, not realistic. That's not how like the real world uh, low resolution videos will look like. So if you look at the same uh, sample of video frames, which I showed you earlier uh, from these data sets, even if we downsample them to a low resolution, of course we have a smaller resolution now, but if we look look carefully, uh, the, the final details are still there and we don't have like uh, any green or any blur, which is always present in videos, which are actually of, uh, of, uh, of low resolution uh, naturally. So that, that's a big challenge, how, how we get those videos. And that's what uh, we have focused uh, while we create this data set. So we want uh, these video samples, which are low uh, resolution to be realistic. And uh, so what we did is we uh, utilize uh, this Virat surveillance uh, data set. And at the same sample, which I showed you earlier. So if we carefully look at this, 
uh, we have uh, these activities which are actually happening far away from the camera. So they are naturally low resolution. So we utilize that fact and based on this, uh, we created a, a data set for uh, benchmarking this task. Now, uh, a, a quick comparison with uh, other data sets uh, when we look into this Virat. So we, we are trying to compare with uh, these three, uh, AVA, GHMDB, and UCF101. And what I'm showing here is uh, the ratio of uh, the act activity region to the uh, complete frame of, of the video. All right, so if you look at AVA, you can see that uh, the activity region is actually covering 30%, so this point three level here in the y-axis. So 30% of the uh, full frame. And uh, it's similar uh, in GHMDB as well, pretty, pretty much close. So in UCF101 again, so these were these are realistic uh, videos, and we can see that it's uh, a bit challenging here. It's just 15%, but when we look into Virat, it's uh, close to 1%. So which makes this uh, more challenging and more useful for uh, the task of which we are uh, trying to solve here. And so what we did is uh, we have created this uh, benchmark data set, uh, which we call uh, Tiny Virat. And uh, these are few properties of the uh, of this data set which we have created. Uh, so these uh, videos are actually realistic low resolution. And the reason is uh, we used Virat, which has naturally occurring tiny actions. And these actions are actually captured in a surveillance environment where the camera is uh, placed at a distance. So these activities are actually happening uh, far away from the camera. So they have like all these uh, properties which we usually have in these uh, real world low resolution videos, like uh, they lack details, uh, they are kind of blurry, uh, which makes uh, this more challenging and realistic. So here's like another sample uh, from uh, Virat data set, and we can see that uh, some activities happening uh, at this region. So if we zoom in um, to that area, we can see that a person is getting out of a car and this is like a, a realistic low resolution video. If you look at this, the, the finer boundaries and all those fine details are actually missing here. So let me show you some more samples uh, from this tiny data dataset. So these are sequence of frames uh, for each sample. And you can see that we have all kinds of distortions uh, which should be there in uh, realistic uh, low resolution videos. And one interesting thing about Tiny Virat is the resolution of the video samples, it's, it's not fixed, which is usually the case with all the other existing data sets, which are focusing on action recognition. So we have a wide range and uh, depending upon like what was the actual resolution when that video was captured, we just preserved that and stored that as a sample. So that's one aspect. The other interesting aspect is uh, the video clips are actually uh, they have multiple labels, so multiple activities can happen at the same time, which makes this even more challenging. Uh, in this plot, uh, I'm trying to show like how the resolution varies uh, for uh, the activities which are there in this data set. So on the x-axis, I'm showing uh, the activities and the y-axis actually shows the number of samples uh, for each activity. So you can see that uh, the distribution is actually varying a lot. So there's some kind of a uh, disbalance as well which is also interesting. And here we have color coded different bins uh, depending upon the resolution of other video clips. So you can see here that the top one is the resolution uh, which is uh, between zero cross zero and 20 cross 20 pixels. So that is uh, coded as blue. And if we look at maybe these three activities here, walking, carrying and standing, so most of these samples are actually falling in that region, so which means that these activities have samples which are pretty small uh, in, in terms of resolution. So the second is orange, which is actually between 20 cross 20 pixels to 40 cross 40 pixels. And we can see that more, uh, most of the activities like which have these orange bar, so they will fall in uh, this category. So the idea is basically uh, the, uh, we have a lot of variation in terms of resolution and which is, which is uh, I think, a unique property of this data set. Let me share uh, uh, with you some more details uh, about this data set uh, when we compare this with UCF101 HMDB. So from resolution, uh, resolution point of view, 
uh, as we know that uh, these two data sets, the videos are 320 cross 240. So all the videos have fixed resolution, whereas in Tiny Virat, uh, the resolution is varying between 10 cross 10 pixels to 128 cross 128 pixels. The third column over here is showing the average number of frames uh, per video. So in this case, we have around 93. So again, it's not fixed. It varies from sample to sample. Some activities are long and some activities are short. And another unique thing is uh, it has multiple. It has multiple labels, which uh, differentiate uh, it from these two data sets. In terms of number number of classes, we have twenty six different classes, and we have uh, roughly around thirteen thousand samples in this data set. Now, for uh, for this challenge, what we did is we extended uh, this data set, and we have a second installment which we call Tiny Virat uh, Version Two. So these details uh, remains the same. It's just like we have more uh, training data now. We have roughly around 26,000 samples uh, in this extended version of Tiny Virat. Now let's talk about uh, evaluation. So since this is a multi-label uh, classification problem, we are using three different metrics. So we have uh, precision, uh, we have recall, and then we have FN score, which is the main metric uh, for ranking different participants. And all these three metrics are computed uh, class-wise. And the evaluation is done on uh, around 6,000 testing samples. Now, before showing you like the performance of uh, the participants, uh, I, will, I will show like the baseline scores. So what we did is we took uh, the standard uh, action classification models and trained on this uh, data set. So we used R2 plus 1D, we have ResNet 3D, I3D, and white ResNet. And we can see that uh, they are more or less uh, similar. So R2 plus 1D performs uh, the best among these uh, these four. So we have a uh, have an F, uh, have a, a F1 score of 0.32, a precision of 0.34, and a recall of 37. Now let's move on to uh, the performance of the uh, top teams. So uh, rank one uh, is a DWAI with a FN score of 0.47, precision 0.51, and a recall of 0.49. And then we have in the second place, uh, team name along uh, with a FN score of 0.44. And then we have uh, a team from University of Hong Kong and SES Tech with a FN score of 0.41. So compared to the baselines, which was using R2 plus 1D, they have actually improved a lot. But still, uh, if we compare this with like the existing data sets, uh, which are, uh, for activity recognition, uh, there is a lot of scope uh, to improve this performance further. So we are keeping the server uh, open for submissions. So if you're interested in this, uh, please go ahead and try, uh, try this data set out. So that's all uh, I have uh, regarding the task introduction. Next, we will have uh, presentations from the top performers. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'll present the solution from Deep Blue AI team for Tiny Action Challenge. I'm going to share our work from these three aspects, task and data analysis or solution, and the concluding. First is a task and data analysis. From the annotation field, we can know that this computation is a multi-label action recognition task. There are 26 classes, and uh, we roughly group uh, these categories into four parts. Activity, uh, vehicle, specialized, and others. The most striking feature of this data set is the uh, real world low resolution. The videos in the data set are realistic and extracted from real world surveillance videos, which may suffer from green camera sensor noise and other factors. All the videos are captured at 30 FPS around 3 seconds per clip. It contains arbitrary sized low resolution videos, which, uh, which range from 10 multiply 10 pixels to 128 multiply 128 pixels with an average of 70 multiply 70 pixels. Next, I will introduce our solution. 
For the action recognition algorithm, we only tried uh, TSM, TPN, Snowy, and uh, CSN due to lack of time. Among them, CSN, that is channel separated network, show great advantage on the other two. Our best single model result is got from uh, interaction reduced CSN with ResNet. 152 as the backbone. Binary cross entropy loss is adopted for the multi label task. We choose SCD as our optimizer and use warm up at the start freeze of the, uh, of the training. The config of the learning rate is also listed in the slide. For the augmentation, we first apply a random resize group and then resize to the scale of 128 multiplied by 128. Another random flip is followed. Experiments show that the scale is a factor that have a great impact on the result. We only try two scales, 128 and 70. The former has a much better score. In the inference freeze, we use Tencrop as a, a kind of test time augmentation. That is, crop the four corners and the center part of the image with the same uh, given crop size and flip it horizontally. The final result is the average of the 10 crops. We also try other TTA methods like flip and multi scale, but get no improvement. The popular example method, uh, file fold cost validation, is also adopted, which boosts the score significantly. For the post processing, we try many different thresholds and choose one which got the highest score. If there, uh, there is no confidence score about the, uh, the threshold after schemoid operation, we just keep the category with the top two scores. As mentioned, mentioned earlier, we can group the 26 groups categories into four uh, parts. We think it's reasonable. Only one class can be retained at most within the same group. So we just keep the one with the highest score above the threshold within every group. Uh, the, the chart on the right side show how we improve our score step by step. Finally, let's, let's make a conclusion. A powerful action recognition algorithm, a suitable skill, <coughs> a well trained model, <coughs> a 10 crop, file for the course for the edition. A suitable threshold and some tricky post processing lead to our final not bad result. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Liu Chen. Today, I will talk about our work in Tidy Action Challenge. This speech will contest three parts background, proposal method, and our experimental results. In real-world civilizations environments, the actions in videos are captured at a wide range of resolutions and may appear very tidy. Therefore, recognizing such actions becomes challenging at a very low resolution. In this challenge, the focus is on recognizing tidy action in videos which makes them realistic and more challenging. Our team analyzed the latest and find it contest arbitrary sized low resolution video, which ranged from 10 pixels to 128 pixels. 
So we propose a two-stage method for recognizing tidy actions in videos, which unit is a video's super resolution model to improve the quality of low resolution actions and then recognize the videos. For video super resolution steps, we use basic VSR model. It presents an information review master missions and a couple of progress schemes to facilitate information aggregation and lead to a state of art performance. We first scaled the video with a height of less than 96 to a size of 64. And then use the video soup resolution model to expand it to a size of 128. And four other videos to scale it to the size of 128. The second stage, action classification network. We use slow fast and the TNet network to train several, several models. We believe that ensemble the strongest models can get more better results. We also use multigrade to train our network. Another important thing is that the pre-trained model on KNet 400 can improve the training results. The training stage is conducted on a 8 multiply 2080 time GPUs with 12 GB memory for each GPU. The above table shows our experimental results. We fuse the prediction scores of all models to get the final results. Our proposal method achieved 0.442 in terms of F1 soccer, ranking second in the tidy action challenge. Finally, congratulations to all participants and winners. And a special thanks to the workshop and the challenge organizers. We learned a lot and enjoyed this competition very much. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Hello, everyone. My name is Tian Tian Gen a master student from University of Electronic Science and Technology of China. I will introduce our solution to Tiny Action Challenge 2021. Our team includes Tian Wang, Tian Tian Gen, Jing Bao Wang, Feng Zheng, and me. I will introduce our solution to Tiny Action Challengers 2021. The presentation is divided into the following parts. Action recognition as a fundamental problem in video-based tasks aims at distinguishing the actions like human interactions, human objects interactions, and so on. Nowadays, it becomes increasingly demanding in video-based applications such as intelligent surveillance, autonomous driving, personal recommendation, and entertainment. However, the most existing action recognition data sites mainly consist of high-quality videos, which are distinctly visible with high resolution. And there are few data sites that are realistic and collected from real-world complex environment. 
In detail, tiny variant V2 data site is a multi-label data site with multiple actions per video clip. And particularly, the videos in the data site are collected from real-world surveillance videos with naturally low resolution. In the tiny variant V2 data site, there are a total of around 26,000 videos with above 17,000 train videos and 6.1 thousand testing videos. The average length of the activity is around 3 seconds. The distribution of the video duration is shown below. Besides, the resolutions of videos in the data side are ranging from 10 to 128. But we found that the most of the video's resolution in the data side is 112 times 112, as shown in the bottom left finger. And in the pictures, we can see the videos are very blurry and have usually multiple labels in one clip. By analyzing the data, we aim to address two main difficulties. The first one is caused by low resolution. From the pictures, we can see that the lifter picture contains a lot of information while the red image with low resolution loses a lot of detail uh, when zoomed in. Besides, another issue is multiple labels that will require a more efficient model to classify them. Here, we will introduce our framework for this task. Firstly, given videos, we sample 16 frames from each video and as mentioned before, we found that even though there are various uh, resolutions of videos in the data side, the large proportion of videos have the resolution of 112 times 112. So, in order to extract better video spatial temporal uh, features and better adapt to the model, we then recess all frames into the same size of 112 times 112. Secondly, R2 plus 1D is used as our backbone network to extract the special temporal features of actions, which was pre-trained by large-scale video data site to obtain better initial weights for the following fine-tuning. After feature extraction, we apply asymmetric laws for multi-label action classification. We will introduce the components of our method clearly in the following slides. Here, we will introduce our backbone model first. Specifically, we utilize R2 plus 1D with ResNet 6 uh, 34 as our backbone network to extract the video features. And in O2 opting better parameters, we initialize the model with print trade weights on the IG165 milling and kinetic data sites. Note that the pre-training process is based on the relatively low resolution inputs, which can alleviate the potential distribution gap between the pre-trained data sites and the target data sites. R2 plus 1D is built on 2D ResNet. It ends the 1D temporal convolution into every 2D convolution block. And compared with 3D ResNet, it factorizes the 3D convolution into separate 2D spatial and 1D temporal components very um, significantly gains in performance. And there are two advantages of R2 plus 1D backbones compared with 3D counterparts. Firstly, despite not changing the number of parameters, R2 plus 1D doubles the number of non-linearities in the network due to the additional relu between the 2D and 1D convolution in each block of ResNet. 
Increasing the number of non-linearities can increase the complexity of functions, which is beneficial for the feature extraction. And the second benefit is that forcing the 3D convolution into separate spatial and temporal components renders the optimization easier. As shown in the feature figure, we can see that for the same number of layers, R2 plus 1D yields not only lower testing error but also lower training error compared to R3D. It indicates that optimization becomes easier when spatial temporal filters are factorized. And the gap in the training losses is particularly large for the knights, having 34 layers, which suggests that facilitation in optimization increases uh, as the depth becomes larger. Since in the typical multiple label setting, a video contains on average few positive labels and many negative ones. Uh, this positive negative imbalance dominates the optimization process and hurts the representation ability of the model. In this task, we apply asymmetric laws. ASL to address the inherent imbalance nature of multi label data sites. Here, we compare uh, binary cross entropy loss with uh, asymmetric loss. As commonly done in multi label classification, given k labels, the base network outputs one logit per label, zk. Each logit is independently activated by a sigmoid function, and yk denotes the ground truth for class k. So the total classification loss is obtained by aggregating a binary loss from k labels. So a general form of a binary loss per label L is given by this. Well, y is the uh, ground truth label, and uh, L plus and L minus are positive and negative loss parts, respectively. By contrast, as for the asymmetric loss, the two mechanisms of asymmetric focusing and the plausibility shifting are integrated into a unified formula. Where P is the network's output probability, ASL allows us to apply two types of asymmetry for reducing the uh, contribution of easy negative samples to the loss function. Soft thresholding via the focusing parameters gamma minus and uh, uh, gamma plus and uh, hard thresholding was the uh, probability margin M. Here, the experimentation details and the uh, experimental results are shown as follows. During training for each radio clip, we sample 16 frames randomly and then we set the frames with various resolutions to the same size. 112, and then phase them to network R2 plus 1D. During evaluation, we sample 16 frames randomly five times, and then average the classification scores to get the final results. From the table, we can see that when using five samples, we can get better F1 score and uh, recall result. In conclusion, we use and pre treat R2 plus 1D for feature representation and an classifier with an asymmetric loss to address a positive negative imbalance problem in multi label classification data sites. 
Finally, we assemble the prediction scores of five clips to boost the final performance. That's all. Thank you for your listening.